Talking about single digits countries, uh, we have Zimbabwe with eight confirmed cases out of 141 tests. And we'll be speaking to a political economist from Zimbabwe, Dr. Monashe Matambo, um, all the way from Zimbabwe, Department of Political and Administrative Studies at the University of Zimbabwe. He joins us on Skype. Thank you so much, doctor, uh, for accepting to do this. I hope you're well. Um, thank you for having me. All right. So just to confirm, Zimbabwe currently has recorded, what, eight cases out of how many tests conducted? 241 tests. Okay. And um, if I may ask, your numbers are pretty low. Could that be a good sign or could it also mean that not enough tests have been conducted and so you don't have a clear picture of what the situation could be on the ground? I think it's a good sign because the president has taken a lot of mitigating um, steps to okay. prevent the spread of coronavirus. Um, two weeks ago, all state universities and schools were shut down. Mm. Uh, first of all, uh, last Friday, the, uh, the president declared a 21-day lockdown mm. on all entities, except for those who are involved in the essential services, particularly the security forces and um, those who want to seek urgent medical care. So okay. I think the government of Zimbabwe has taken a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, significant steps to try and reduce the spread of, virus, of the virus. Okay. Now, talking about the lockdown being one of the mitigating factors, how easy has it been implementing this 21-day lockdown, especially concerning um, you know, the, the, the informal sector and their complaints that they might have to still work in order to make some money for themselves? Has it been easy? Uh, it's not been easy. 85% um, of Zimbabwe's economy is informal. Okay. Uh, therefore, therefore a, a, a lot of people have been left vulnerable. Mm. However, the good part is that um, besides President Debaton Munangago's efforts, opposition leader um, Nelson Chamisa, as well as Dr. Nkosana Moyo, as mm. well as uh, Dr. Noah Manika, okay. have also been urging the Zimbabwean population to stay at home during this, these trying times. Mm. Um, the government of Zimbabwe has also come up with various uh, social safety nets. For example, the 2020 budget, the capital expansion of the 2020 budget has been redirected okay. toward um, mitigating uh, the coronavirus. Mm. Uh, the Minister of Finance has um, placed approximately 20 million US dollars mm -hmm. uh, towards this cause. It may not be enough, but development partners, yeah. um, such as um, the DFID of the United Kingdom, have pledged. Um, 100,000 pounds, the British government has pledged 1.7 million pounds. Okay. The Chinese government is assisting the government of Zimbabwe mm. in um, upgrading some of its hospitals, particularly Wilson, uh, Wilkin, Wilkin Hospital in Harare, which is the main center for, okay. for referrals pertaining to this virus. All right. Now, the $20 million that you said has been redirected from the 2020 budget. What exactly yeah. is that going to be spent on? And I'm asking this in relation to Ghana and how we set up, uh, aside some money for education, um, you know, for some facilities and a few other things as well. What is the $20 million going to be spent on? And have they started working towards that? Um, the Minister of Finance in his um, place release on the 30th of March was not very specific. He just mentioned that it will be spent on health-related issues. He, he said he's going to present another statement soon on, a specific, on specific measures or specific appropriations that are going to be made. Okay. Now, you have yes. recorded... Mm -hmm. You were saying something. I'm listening. Okay. Uh, Let me ask you this. You've recorded one death so far. Yes. What was the situation with this particular person? Were there any underlying conditions... Yes, um, this, uh, this person is said to have had an operation uh, last, last year. Okay. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think he had a, tum uh, a tumor somewhere, somehow. So um, there were underlying factors. Mm. However, uh, there have been reports on social media, particularly Twitter, that okay. the government is reporting some cases. Um, the, however, these cases are not confirmed. I'm not sure whether it's true or people are just trying to cause social despondence. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now, back, back to the issue of the budget and how much money has been spent on, you know, fighting the virus. 
Is there a cap amount to be given back to especially the informal sector, which you said makes up about 85% of the country's population? Is there any plan to provide them with some food, with some money, and also for businesses as well? Are there any stimulus packages that are being made available for them? So far, the Minister of Finance, Professor Mtuli Ngobe, has pledged um, 200, million, uh, 200 million Zimbabwe dollars. Okay. That's our approximately. 8 million US dollars. All right. Approximately million US dollars um, to cushion the vulnerable 1 million urban dwellers. That okay. implies that um, each household will be getting approximately 7 US dollars a month. Mm. Uh, I don't think this would be enough, but at least government has done something. At least, at least. Okay. Are there any cases of brutalities in ensuring that people respect the law and stay indoors? Uh, by nature, Zimbabweans are a very peaceful, are a very peaceful nation. There is no report of any violence at all at the present moment. If you were to see videos of the streets of Harare, the Harare, as we speak, is virtually empty. The only people you see in central Harare right now are health workers who are disinfecting uh, taxi ranks in Harare. There is absolutely no one. I think it's because all political leaders have called upon the people of Zimbabwe to stay at home. People of Zimbabwe have got great, great respect for their political leaders and they are taking heed of them. Mm. And the president has not yet deployed the, security, the, 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 the defense forces. The police are the, ones who, are the ones who are very much visible at the present moment. The president said you only deploy the army okay. when, when the need arises. Okay. All right. Yes. And, and speaking of social distancing as well, are people adhering to that? And I'm talking about maybe the public transport and the few people who might be providing some essential services and all of that. How easy has it been implementing the social distancing um, you know, um, um, law as well? The president has banned all private taxi operators. Only um, government buses uh, called Zupo are operating. And they are only carrying a, a minimum number of people. Mm. And these buses are being uh, disinfected both uh, when people board the bus and when people leave the bus. Mm. So governments are taking a lot of measures. Furthermore, not everyone can board these buses. You have to get clearance from the police okay. uh, to board buses. You really have to be working for the critical service sector to mm. board these buses. So even the media is not working? Um, some, uh, uh, the Herald in particular is working. Uh, the Herald is a parastatal. It's, uh, it's working in collaboration um, with the Ministry of Information. I see. It was a yes, the president asked the Ministry of Information um, to make sure that information, information dissemination still exists um, right. during this type of crisis. Okay, my final question to you before you go. What could be the impact on the economy of Zimbabwe, which we all do understand uh, hasn't been the best in the last few um, you know, years as well? What could be the impact? Could it be dire? Um, I think Zimbabwe won't experience uh, much of a shock from this because um, the economy is already, is, is, already, is already in a dire state. Yeah. Uh, we are navigating through dire fiscal straits and the economy is on the verge of a precipice. An international um, economic crisis at the present moment yeah. uh, would not have much of an impact on the economy of Zimbabwe. Hmm. Interesting. Dr. Monashe Matamba, thank you so much uh, for speaking to us. He is a political economist uh, at a university in Zimbabwe. Thank you very much. Now,